So about 12 years ago, at a really important time in my photography career, I was living in Paris and I had just moved over there because I was doing a lot of work in Europe and I was traveling to London and Germany and Paris seemed really centrally located. Kate and I had a small loft apartment there right in the Marais and it was a really creative time for me. And at the same time, Having lived there for a few years, I started feeling a little disconnected from the rest of my life, from anything but career. <laughs> As an action sports and active lifestyle photographer, that was really the only work that I was doing, but I was longing for something that was beyond what I had spent the last 10 years of my career photographing. in the, the Tuileries, which is the garden right in front of the Louvre there near Jeux de Palme. And it occurred to me that I felt more connected to, I felt like I had a, a better knowledge of the people, the places, the, the, the vibes of cities like Paris and New York and London where I was doing so much work. And I didn't have those things with my home city of Seattle. And shortly after that, for a variety of reasons, we moved back to Seattle. I was sitting in my hammock one day in the backyard and I started thinking of a project. I was growing more and more obsessed with portraits, with photographs of people rather than landscapes and places and action and lifestyle. And it occurred to me that I might be able to put those two things together. I started thinking of people that I knew in Seattle that had inspired me and some that I called my dear friends and others that I had either met in passing or had longed to meet. And in that moment, I made a promise to myself to follow my instincts and to follow my curiosity. And so I simply began taking photographs of the handful of people that I knew and admired and respected in my studio in Seattle and see where it went. Test one, two, three, four, ABC, one, two, three. Does that sound good? Yeah. You get four microphones pointed out. <laughs> when I engaged these folks in conversation before, during, and after the portrait sessions, I found that I learned more and each of those people had someone else to recommend that they thought would be interesting for me to photograph. And before I knew it, the project of just photographing some people and learning a few things had evolved. And that, over time, turned into this book called The Seattle 100, which today is 10 years old. It's big enough that, that many different cultures can thrive and collide with each other. And it's always evolving and changing and some people go and some people stay. It gives a really skewed feeling about what culture is like in the United States of America, living here, I think. It's just, you know, it's Seattle. There's dogs and beer. Where do you go get your hair cut? <laughs> That's one thing I must say. People can make movies out here. Somebody make me a video, please, about a movie. Nowhere else uh, do we have a freeway park. There's no one who just built a lid over a freeway and call it a park. I like to go to the Sounders games on the light rail so I don't have to park. Yes. <laughs> when Ballard has good food, you know we're doing well. <laughs> Bauhaus, the coffee shop up on Capitol Hill, to die for. How do you not want to go there and drink coffee all day long? Certainly the late 80s were a really great time for music in Seattle, but so were the early 90s, the mid 90s, the late 90s, <laughs> and the last 10 years. So Seattle seems kind of easy. <laughs> to, like, here's all the buttons, just press them, look. Anybody that's not from Seattle should know it rains here all the time. You'll be miserable if you move here. I love being with people who stimulate my imagination, accelerate my imagination. And that's what this core group of people do. It's kind of a reverse AA, you know, a bunch of people who all have the same addiction and we're like, how can we take steps further into this abyss? So in celebration of the 10th anniversary of this project, I wanted to look back and try and understand a little bit more about what I'd learned. One of which is the value of personal work. This was specifically a thread that I started pulling on and it was like a curiosity of mine. 
And it has occurred to me now, 10 years later, that that is the foundation of every great personal project in creativity. When we put art out into the world, we never really can understand the impact that it might have. By the time I had you know, photographed 70 or 80 of these people, it became clear to me that one aspect of the project would be the book. What unfolded over time that this book would also become a documentary, a thousand cases of Seattle 100 wine. I donated all of my advance and Ultimately, it ended up adding value to the city and to the other people as well. There's so many connections that were made, businesses were started. And in fact, Jay Inslee, who was at the time a representative um, in the House for Washington State, took notice of the project and crashed our opening party. And in getting to connect with him, uh, this project was then ushered into uh, the leadership of the city of Seattle, and it inspired an economic impact study on the value of creativity in the city. The study influenced policy, and policy changed how Seattle looked at investing in its art scene. It changed it how Seattle was positioning itself as a global leader. To be fair, I've started so many projects that didn't evolve into something that's so large. I just, I want to underscore the power of pursuing creativity and curiosity. I was curious about photography, black and white portraiture, and I was curious about my city. And when I put those two things together and took action on that, it turned into something much bigger than I could ever imagine. The takeaway for me and what I wanted to share with you is we never know the value of anything before we start it, whether it's a walk in the park or a multi-year project like the Seattle 100. But what I do know is that that's where all the best stuff in life lies. It lies on the other side of fear, on the other side of your curiosity, on the other side of not being able to see all of the steps in anything in life. And yet, we have to take those steps. Those steps are the key to our happiness, our connection with our own creativity and, and the world around us. You can have it.